But I wonder whether your childhood techno diet went the same way as mine. Did you spend the first half of the 80s doing this? Was your minor as manic as this one? Were you partial to a bit of Jet Set Willy? Yep, these eight colour marvels were once the cutting edge of computer entertainment and for many people games like this acted as an introduction to home computing. And this is the man who helped kick off that home computing revolution. Clive Sinclair then, Sir Clive now. He was the brains behind this little box, the ZX Spectrum, the 8-bit wonder that sold millions around the world. It spawned a huge game scene. Thousands of titles, all smaller in size than a modern email, entertained and inspired an entire generation to not only play, but also to code and to invent. Well, now Sir Clive is putting his name to this, the Spectrum Vega, which comes preloaded with a thousand of the original Spectrum games. It is a gaming-centric reincarnation of Sinclair's iconic machine, which exceeded its crowdfunding target in just a couple of days. So with this in mind, I caught up with Sir Clive to talk to him about his passion for games. Did you play any Spectrum games yourself? Never. OK, maybe not for games, but definitely for modern tech. How much of today's technology, modern technology, would you say you use? Oh, well, I don't directly use it myself at all, really. I've got a landline telephone and... No, no. OK, but how about artificial intelligence and the vision he had back in the 80s for the future of computing? I, no, I'm, I'm very impressed by the, the processing power, but I'm not at all impressed by what it, it, is done with it. It's, it. it's really rather dull when you consider how you know, what we achieved with, with a few K of RAM in those days, it, 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 it's a bit sad how very much it has not progressed from there. Uh, fully expected back then that we would have um, computerised doctors and computerised teachers. You know, letting a, letting a robot operate on you, I suppose. I mean, even if the technology is there, do you think people could ever be persuaded? Too damn right. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Well, not right now, because I know they're not good enough at the moment, but one day they'll, they'll, be, they'll, they'll surpass humans. One of the talking points at the moment is the driverless car. Yes. So I suppose that's the kind of thing where we have to give a lot of trust over to. I gave a, a lecture, uh, well, back in the 80s, I gave a lecture where I said, if you'll enjoy driving, um, get on with it now, because you, you'll lose the chance in a, in, in a few decades. Because once they start, and people realise how much safer they are, um, they'll suddenly start passing laws saying, sorry, but you can't drive anymore, you'll have to leave, leave that to the cars. If a driverless car has a crash, who's to blame? Yeah. Is it, is it the maker of the car? Is it the maker of the software? Is it the maker of the sensor? Is it the person that was sat behind the wheel that should have taken over at the last minute? You worry too much. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Maybe I should have been a lawyer. Thank you so much for seeing us. Great pleasure. Thanks nice to see you again. Place.